support all of this. Okay. So in order to support replanning, what happens is you have an initial problem where the problem is denoted by the initial state and the goals, right? And that changes. So your state might change because you have new objects in the state. Maybe you know you have a new state, you have new information coming in from your sensors and so on. Sometimes your goals may change as well. The human may say, okay, here's an elaboration on your goal and so on, okay? So that changes. So what you do then uh, as a sort of engineering solution to handle this is you stop executing the old plan, okay? Because uh, the old plan may no longer be valid in the world. And then you assimilate those state changes. So, you know, what has changed from this state that I started planning for to the current state that I'm at, okay? Similarly, you assimilate the changes in the goals as well, okay? There are some new goals, there may be some modifications to goals and so on. And then you give that new instance to the planner to plan, and the planner obviously comes up with a new plan, and you start executing that new plan. So, I mean, this is, there's, there's nothing very challenging about this. You're basically replanning from scratch, okay? You're saying that I'll take all the new information that comes in, and then I'll create a new plan. And like I said, we have this SAPA replan system that is actually able to do this, okay? And the reason that it's able to do this is because of this component known as the execution monitor, okay? So remember when I showed you that architecture picture, the execution monitor basically sits between the planner and the rest of the outside world, you know, between the information that's coming in from the robot, from the human, and so on. So the execution monitor actually has a couple of roles. One thing is that it implements this rational choice over the possible actions, okay? So what it does is there are two possible choices. Either you can continue with your old plan, the plan that you are currently following, okay? You can either continue with that, or you can say, I want to replan. I want to try to come up with a better plan. I want to come up with a new plan. So the execution monitor basically tries to pick that choice, okay? And then the second thing, once it decides on that, what it does is it uh, picks the objective. So it tries to pick the goals that the robot should actually be achieving, okay? So objective selection is one of the uh, other responsibilities of this execution monitor, okay? And finally, the last piece in uh, sort of specifying changes from the world, right? So obviously these changes are coming in from your sensors, they're sort of unfiltered, and you need to have a representation to specify this uh, to your planner, that you know, here are the things that have changed in the world, uh, here is the new state of the world, here are the, you know, maybe the new goals and so on. So we actually have an update uh, representation for the robot. So here's an example of that. So what you have is basically you're telling the robot, are there any new objects? Uh, you know, in this update? Like, have you found any new objects in the world? Are there new events? So these are all predicates that describe the state of the world, right? So are there new updates about your state? And then uh, finally, are there updates about the goal? So this is a new goal that's being assigned to the robot at this point, okay? So these, this is basically a representation via which you can specify updates in the world to the planner, okay? And now finally, I'm gonna put the replanning and the open world quantified goals together in an example to show you what happens. Okay, so this is a simple toy example from the uh, search and rescue domain that uh, we've been talking about so far. So imagine that you know you had a problem and this was the initial goal of uh, initial plan of the robot. Okay, so basically the robot's goal was it's given a med kit. Okay, and the commander tells the robot, okay, go and deliver this med kit at the end of the hallway. Okay, and obviously you want to do this with the robot because this is a building that might collapse at any point. You don't really want to and humans in, okay? So you give the robot a med kit at the beginning and say, go and deliver this inside the building somewhere, okay? So this is the original plan that, you know, you move through the hallway and then you reach the end of the hallway and you deliver the medical kit, okay? But while the robot is executing this original plan, what happens is you uh, give it this new information, this open world modified goal. Remember this goal that we were talking about, okay? So you give the robot this information that there may be wounded persons inside, you know, inside of rooms and so it's supposed to look for wounded people inside rooms now, okay? And Along with this, what you also give it is because you interrupted it. So the robot was executing the original plan, okay? And you in interrupted the robot. So when you interrupt it, you obviously also send it a state update. So you say, tell it that, you know, I interrupted you at this point. Here are some, here's some new information about the world, okay? So in this case, you tell the robot that there's a new room. So remember, in this scenario, there were actually no rooms. The robot was just focusing on the hallway and it was going down the hallway, okay? But now you're telling it that there is a new room that actually exists, okay? And this new room is connected to one of the hallway segments, um, and then you give this update to the planner, okay? So the planner puts this open world quantified goal and this update together, and it basically replans. It comes up with a new plan, okay? So this new plan, you'll notice that because the update says that the robot is actually at hallway two, okay? So it's at the second hallway location, uh, it actually starts from there. So the plan actually starts from there. So you say, okay, you move from hallway two to hallway three, and then now you enter that room because of this goal, okay? Because you told the robot that if you see a room, 
there's a possibility that there might be injured people inside that room. So it's actually created a plan to go in, sense for that injured person, okay? And the reason that the rest of these actions are grayed out, right, is that this is a sensing action right here. We know that when there is a sensing action in your plan, you're going to get some feedback from the world, okay? Either the sensing action is going to come back and tell you that there is this person, okay? Because remember, this is still a runtime object. Uh, that the planner has optimistically added to its knowledge base, okay? So it's either going to come back and say, okay, this person does exist because my sensors were actually able to determine that this person was there, or it's going to come back and say, okay, there is no person. So you have to replan beyond this point anyway. So the, it executes the plan up till this point, and then uh, it replans and you know continues executing the new plan. So that was basically the open world quantified goals and the replanning capabilities put together, okay? Now I'm going to talk about the third capability, that of model updates. And these model updates have to come obviously via natural language, because if you're communicating with a human, it's natural to assume that the human will give you these updates via natural language. So here's an example of that. To go into a room when you are at a closed door, push it one meter. Understood. So what happens here is that the human is actually telling the robot that in order to go into a room, this is something that the robot doesn't know beforehand, okay, that it can push doors. Okay? So it's telling the robot that here's a new capability that you know if you go into a room and you're at a closed door uh, and you push it one meter, then you might you, you'll actually be inside that room. Okay? And this is something that the robot didn't know until the human actually told it that. Okay? So this is just the continuation of the first video that I showed you where earlier the robot could go into an open room. There's a red but but if the door was closed, then the robot would not be able to go inside, okay? Now, the human is actually giving it some new information about a new capability. So the human's telling it that, you know, if a door looks closed, you can try pushing that door. And you can try to go inside the room that way, okay? So this is a model update. And again, like I said, here is what that update looks like finally in the PDDL representation. So this is what the human says. Human says to go into a room when you're at a closed door, push it one meter, okay? This is what you're getting. This is the information, the knowledge that you're getting from the human, okay? And it needs to finally go into this kind of format because this is what, this is the representation that the planner understands and that the planner can uh, sort of make plans with, okay? So how does that happen? So you have certain components that come from uh, different sources. So for example, the duration of the push action, that comes from your architecture because you have to determine how long does it take the robot to traverse one meter, for example, okay? So that's information that comes from your architecture. There's some information that comes from the human, from the natural language uh, uh, processing, okay? So for example, the name of the action itself, push, right? And then the, the parameters, the objects that, that take part in that action, right? So you have the doorway and then you have the current location and you have the location that you're going to, okay? And you also have the condition and the effect. So if you're at that location and then you end up pushing it, then you will be inside of the room that's connected to it. So that comes from natural language. And then there's some information that comes from your background knowledge as well. So this is how you build this action representation that you can send to uh, the planner. And then the planner can make a new plan. It can replan uh, based on that. And one of the questions that comes up is why are model updates so important, right? You can, you can, you, you know, you wouldn't be uh, far off in asking, you know, why wouldn't you just, if you knew this information, why wouldn't you just tell the robot beforehand, okay? Now, the problem with that is that obviously we know that there's one ground truth model of the world, but neither the human nor the robot have that complete model. It's almost impossible to give a full model, right, to either the robot or for the human to actually have that, okay? And one of the things in human robot teaming, and this is again from the human human studies, right? So remember the very first video that I showed you where these two guys are teaming up in the Minecraft scenario. So this is one of the things we found, right? That there are capabilities that humans know about, but they don't think about it, you know, all the time. But then when you put them in a circumstance, in a situation where this is actually uh, brought up to the fore, they remember it, okay? And you want to enable that sort of thing. You want to get as much information as you can from the human, okay? So here's an example. So during execution, obviously, humans might think of a new action that the robot could be able to do. So this is the push action over here, okay? But you could also think of action deletion. This is that example I was giving you where maybe there's a gas leak, right? And you don't want the robot to take pictures out of an abundance of caution, right? There might also be modification to actions, right? So the robot might actually have a take picture action, okay? But uh, because there's been a power outage, you know, there's an earthquake and the building has had a power outage, so there's very poor lighting conditions, okay? So you actually want to modify the action and tell the robot that, you know, there's a new precondition for taking picture now, which is that you need auxiliary light, you need an auxiliary source of light, okay? And the point is that 
this information may strike the human during execution time, okay? So you want to provide a way of specifying these updates. So what did we have to do? So like I said, the model is represented in this planning domain description language, PDDL, and that was the example that I showed you of the action, that was the representation. And what you need to do is you need to take this PDDL model, which is described in terms of a set of constants, a set of predicates, a set of functions, and finally a set of actions, right? And you need to specify a way that you can, uh, you know, you can provide modifications to this on the fly, okay? In specific, the way that you know we update the model is you pause the execution of the current plan. I mean, you'll see that this has become a recurrent theme now. That you know, because something has changed in the world, you pause the execution of your current plan, and then you provide a way of updating the existing model. Okay, so we had to provide an API essentially to do this, and then you replan with that new model. You've seen this previously as well, and then you execute that new plan. So that's how uh, sort of the model update process works. Um, and now finally, I'm going to go to the fourth problem that we had to solve. And you know, this is the last of those demos that I'm going to show uh, about one of the problems that we had to solve. And this, in specific, is the problem of plan and intent recognition. Okay. So this scenario, that's Gordon, by the way, one of my collaborators. Commander X is going to perform triage in room five. Okay. I need you to take a med kit to room one. Okay. All right, so what's happened here is two things, okay? Gordon basically told the robot what, one thing about Commander X, okay? So he said Commander X is going to perform triage at some room, okay? And then the second thing was he also assigned a goal to the robot itself, okay? The, so Gordon also said, you need to take a med kit to some other room, okay? So those are the two things that happened, and I want you to hold on to that, okay? So the scenario where this happened, so this is Gordon, this is the robot, right? And they were communicating, okay? And this is your overall scenario, this is your map. So Gordon was telling the robot about this guy, about Commander X, okay? So Commander X is in room three right now, okay? And Gordon was telling the robot that Commander X has a goal of performing triage in room one, in this location, okay? And he was also telling the robot that I need you to pick up a med kit from wherever the med kit might be, and I need you to take it to this other location, okay? So that's basically the scenario that I'm gonna talk about, all right? And the way we do this is when the robot has knowledge, you know, the knowledge that Gordon gave it about Commander X's intentions, right? It maps those that those beliefs and that knowledge about Commander X into a new planning instance, okay? So on a very high level, what we're trying to do is we're trying to take all the information we know about Commander X, okay? And we're trying to simulate Commander X's planning process at some higher level, okay? So, so that the robot can predict what Commander X might be doing, all right? So that's sort of the high level uh, of what we're doing. So you map that information into a new planning instance, and then you generate a plan. You have, you know, you generate a prediction of this guy's plan, of Commander X's plan. What is he going to do? Okay. Yeah. How much good does Gordon know about the whole thing? Like, uh, does he know everything? Gordon. Well, well, Gordon could know much more than he's actually telling the robot, but he's only no, telling. No, no, no. Yeah, but right. just the, like how much. That's well, so God, Gordon. Basically, you said that you have to map the robot's belief and knowledge. No, no, no. We are mapping the belief and knowledge about Commander X. Commander X is another human. Okay. Right. So the Gordon knows the map, and uh, every room. What? No, no. So Gordon doesn't need to know all of the information. Gordon basically knows information about another alien. So think about this is Gordon and this is you. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Gordon knows that you have an intention of being in this room later on. Okay. And then Gordon knows what, for example, what his own goals are, okay? But Gordon doesn't have to know anything else other than that. So it's not a requirement that Gordon has to know everything about the map or anything like that. And the only information, in fact, that Gordon passes on to the robot is what you are, you know, what you intend to do later on. So basically, what the robot is doing is it's taking that information from Gordon and it's mapping that information into a new planning instance of you. So what I'm doing is, on a very high level, on an abstract level, I'm trying to simulate what plans you might do, okay? And I, I'll come to that in the hope that it'll actually help my own planning process. Okay? All right. So, three. So, you have this robot, Gordon, and... And the other human, exactly. And what the robot is trying to do is take information about that other human from Gordon and then create a simulated uh, planning instance of that other human. Because that other human might become important later on, you know, in coordinating my plan. Because, again, we're all on a team, right? We're doing human-robot teaming, and we're all in the same scenario. So there might be conflicts, there might be coordination. I mean, resource conflicts, right? Yes. So, no, and also different uh, member of the team knows different things. Yes, absolutely. You can That's have... That's what I want to know, yes. how complementary uh -huh. all of these members are. 
Right, so you could actually put together, so right now we don't put together all of their knowledge, okay. but one thing you can do to extend this work, right, is everybody has a different, in fact we were talking about this yesterday, that everybody has a different conception of the world, mm -hmm. you could put it all together in <laughs> one central thing and try okay, to Okay, another that. question. Who is the boss then? Here, three of them. Who is the boss? So, Gordon? No, so implicitly the boss is the guy who's assigning the goals, okay? So in this case, for example, the second thing that Gordon said was he assigned a goal to the robot, remember? So okay. he also said, you need to take a med kit to this room. So okay. Gordon's the boss in okay. that particular case, right. but there's no central boss or anything, especially as you start getting into these multi-agent teaming scenarios, okay. right? There's no real central boss. It's just okay. there are agents that can accomplish or you know give you certain goals, and there are agents that can assign certain goals. That's or they, ha they can also have conflicting goals. They could have, that, that's actually that's one of the things I'm going to come to now, that's that's part of the reason we're doing this, right? We want to coordinate, so actually what I'm going to show you is, for example, if Commander X and the robot both need this medical kit, right? You don't want the robot to go pick up the medical kit that Commander X was planning to pick up, right? Because there's still this implicit notion that we should let humans do whatever they want, like help the humans but stay out of the way of the humans, okay? At least for now, that's the notion, right? So Elon Musk doesn't believe this. <laughs> but, but anyway, so 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 you want to do some coordination, you know, to eliminate some of the resource conflicts and so on. So that's part of why we did this. Um, okay. All right. So um, right. So that's exactly the next steps. You use the extracted. So what you were doing here is you were simulating the plan of this human, right? And the reason you're doing that is you want to actually deconflict the robot's plan. So, like I said, you know, you don't want both the agents going for the same med kit, right? So the robot will pick it up, leave, and then the human actually comes here. He thought there was a med kit here, but there might not be anymore, right? So you want to make sure that something like that doesn't really happen. So, um, right. So the solution to this, and again, I'm providing you the solution, but I'm going to go into the detail after this. Okay. Then I have another question. Yes. Do they communicate? Not nothing other than what Gordon told them. Only, oh, okay. Yeah, no other communication, no. Okay. Yeah, so that's part of it, right? Like, if they can communicate and synchronize all of the time. But you are, it's a team. Why it is a team, I, I understand, but Why there may be situations. No, 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 it's a team, but depending on the application. So remember, I'm talking about urban search and rescue, right? Uh -huh. So sometimes you go into buildings, there's no Wi-Fi network, the Wi-Fi is down, right? And there's no, for example, signal. You can't get your radio to penetrate some of these you know, broken buildings and so on. So sometimes you do need to work on these models. We don't have full communication. So those are the scenarios that we're trying to address here. You know, start, start by a simplification of the problem okay. and then try to expand it more and more to take, okay. make it more realistic basically so, yeah, makes sense. right and again like i said you know this is just the example that we started out with to show the capabilities of this kind of thing you will of course we will of course relax some of these assumptions so i'll come to that um, you know in a little bit so anyway so let me give you a quick overview of the solution and then right after this you know a couple of slides later i will actually go into the full detail of this problem itself okay so in this case what happens is this is the prediction the robot's prediction of this guy's plan, okay? So the robot assumes that, okay, this guy is here, he's gonna come out into the hallway, he's gonna go into the hall four. So, right, to answer your question, the robot actually has the map. The robot knows, you know, where, uh, you know, it knows the layout of the map, and it knows where, for example, the med kits are, and where Commander X is, okay? So it can produce this plan for the guy. So it can say, he's gonna move out of here, go to hall five, then move down the hallway, get into this room, so, you know, he moves into from hall one into room one, and then he's gonna pick up this med kit. So this is the part that we really wanted, right? This is the reason that we're trying to simulate or predict this plan of Commander X, okay? So we're trying to say that, okay, in my reckoning, Commander X is going to pick up this medical kit, okay? So that that's basically what you want to extract from that simulation so that the robot knows now that, okay, I shouldn't be in contention for this med kit. There's another perfectly good med kit here, maybe I can pick that up, okay? So that's essentially the solution. And I'll, like I said, I'll come into you know, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about this in more detail in a couple of slides. But, so that was the first part, you know, the engineering solution that, you know, I showed you all these. Yes. So go back to that picture for a second. Yes. Right, so, so there's a bunch of assumptions here. One of which is that Commander X actually knows there's a med, med kit in room one. If he doesn't know that, yes. he might go after the med kit in room four. Right? Med kit in room four, yeah. So, the, uh, so there are a couple of assumptions. So one of the assumptions is that Commander X has all the information necessary to make his plans. You know, there's no like, there's no occlusion. If he knows about Medkit Four, he also knows about Medkit One. Okay. Wait, wait. What? No, 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 no. That's no, no, right. That's not the same, right? So now we're doing something else. You're, you're assuming he has complete knowledge about yeah, Medkit. No, there's no such assumption. But but he does uh, complete knowledge. No, not complete knowledge, but he right. does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. Okay. yeah. Because I think you're getting confused. So, okay. So it's not necessary for him to actually know about the Medkit in Room One in order for him to complete his goal. No, it's not. That's right. It's not. It's not. It's not. Yeah. So that's no. No. It's not. Yeah. It's not necessary right. so, for him so, to know that. So, so you're making a second assumption here, which is that you're assuming that he's going to act optimal. 
Correct. Yeah. So actually, that was we we actually did some experiments in this work as part of that. That we said, not rationally slash optimally basically, which is that you pick up the med kit that you know you don't add extra actions out of your way in your plan. That I mean, we called it rational, but it's also optimal, right? You go for the shortest possible plan. So basically, you don't go out of your way to pick up this med kit, then go back. Is that what you're talking about? Right. But, yeah. But if you did not know what mm -hmm. you knew about med kit one or not, or the med kit room one. Yes. Not, yes. 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 Then then you couldn't actually guess which room you would Which go room to. you would actually go and pick up the metric from. Yeah. In fact, that's we actually ran some experiments on, you know, is this what, you know, is is is, is this what ends up happening? Like if you assume optimality, if you assume that he's going to go for the shortest plan, the prediction ends up being right, obviously, because we are baking in that assumption into our process. But yes, that is an assumption we make right now. Yeah. And, and you're also assuming that, that he actually knows uh, the same information about the layout of the building you do. Yes. Yes. Right. So, right. so it, it might be the case that he knows an alternate path to get into room one. Right. Right. And that might actually be longer or shorter or whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. That would affect your sort of simulation of his plan. Yes. Or your. Yeah. Could be another hallway on the other side. Right. Right. A med kit on the way. Yeah. Right. Right. So actually, the the thing that this boils down to is currently at least the way, you know, the way we started this work is we made a couple of assumptions. We assumed one that we knew the model of Commander X. Okay. So we knew. That's another thing, by the way, that you know that's baked into this. That you know we know the actions, we know all of the actions that Commander X will be able to do. That's one. And then the second one is that you know, like you said, we know exactly what Commander X knows. Okay. Because, for example, if there's a much shorter path somehow, you know, to this to this place, then you're wrong in your predictions. But we started with that assumption, and then we tried to relax some of those notions. So, yeah, there are a couple of those assumptions baked in this. And I'll actually come to this. I'll, I'll, I'll come to this in more detail. But uh, Anyway, so that was that was part one, which was about the engineering, uh, you know, contribution, which was what it, what are all these, you know, these four different problems that we needed to handle uh, in order to make this planner successful to, to deploy this planner on the robot. Okay. Now the second one is an analysis of solution methods, and I'm actually going to talk about some of the more recent work in this, you know, in the interest of time. Um, so. Before I do that, I, I, I should also point out that uh, all of this work has resulted in publications. We've published this in various places, and uh, I think as Rao was pointing out, you know, people have also cited some of this work. Um, so in fact, a lot of these papers actually are on the top of the citation list. So uh, this work's been going on, uh, it's been published, people have actually cited this work. But that by no means uh, is to say that you know, this is the only work in this field. In fact, I go into this uh, in the dissertation that there is a rich body of uh, sort of connect connected and related work, uh, whether it's to do with you know the human robot teaming problem in general. I mean, I call it human robot teaming, but then there's been a lot of work out of Manuela Veloso's group where they basically talk about this in terms of symbiotic autonomy, right? So they have a robotic agent, they have a human agent, and these two agents are basically uh, in a symbiotic relationship. And so there's a lot of work on symbiotic autonomy. In fact, Brian Colton, one of her students. He actually worked on replanning, you know, with dynamic information in these uh, sort of symbiotically aut autonomous scenarios and so on. So there's been a lot of work on that. Um, you know, in the past, there's also been a lot of work on mixed initiative planning in the automated planning community itself. So mixed initiative planning was, you know, this idea that humans should be part of the planning process. Okay, so you have a planner. Uh, you want humans to be able to give information to that planner on how to uh, sort of. Uh, uh, how to make it search better, for example, how to make the search process of the planner better. Uh, you want humans maybe to give the planner information on these plans are better than these other plans. So the humans are part of that. So there's been a lot of work on mixed initiative planning. And then each of those problems that I talk about, you know, in specific, those have also had sort of a very rich history. Okay. So the open world goals, for example, way back, you know, a couple of decades ago in the planning community, there was a lot of work on these local closed world assumptions. And there was this notion of, you know, LCW statements. And, you know, if you have parts of the world that, uh, you know, there are parts of the world that you can say, I know everything about this small part of the world. Okay. I have sensed and I know, so, so for example, I think the example that they used was like the Unix directory structure, okay? So if you go to a new computer, right, and you don't know the file structure, you don't know the directory structure, but then you go to a directory and then you do ls, right? So then you know the contents of that directory. That directory is closed as far as the knowledge is concerned now because you know everything that's there. So there's been a lot of work on that. There's also, of course, been a lot of work on sort of uh, 
goals. You know, how do you make goals more expressive? Uh, how do you add notions, you know, of uh, uh, time to goals, trajectory constraints, and so on? There's been a lot of work on that. Um, there's of course been a lot of work in the planning community on, in, on replanning and execution monitoring. You know, we are by no means the first people to extend planners to an applied domain, right? There have been planners uh, applied to spacecraft. Uh, you know, they've been applied to. Uh, a bunch of other uses, and there's also been a lot of theoretical work on, on, on this topic of replanning and execution monitoring. Um, on a different note, there's been a lot of work in the multi-agent community on dealing, you know, with commitments between agents. Obviously, you know, multi-agent community—that's what they're interested in. So they're talking about, you know, when you have multiple agents in your world, how do you deal with commitments, uh, you know, between those agents and so on. And finally, there's been a lot of work on coordination between a human and a robot, or between different agents based on knowledge about mental models, okay? So recently, because robots, you know, have become more popular, there's been work on, you know, uh, coordinated assembly tasks, when you have these assembly robots, right? So you have humans and assembly robots working together, you know, how do you ensure that they coordinate their work? You know, handovers of things, so if your robot is trying to hand over something to uh, a human and things like that. So there's been a lot of work on that as well. <coughs> okay, so, as I promised, I'm going to go into a bit of detail, as far as time permits, on a couple of these problems. The first of which is this problem of plan and intent recognition. So this is the last thing that I talked about, right? The one where Gordon comes and tells the robot about certain things about Commander X, and then you're trying to predict the plan of Commander X, okay? And this is kind of just a high-level motivation or an argument saying that, you know, this is an important capability, okay? You, if you're in a teaming scenario and you have uh, reason to believe that you might get some information about the beliefs of the other agents, about the possible intentions of the other agents and so on, then you want to use that information as much as possible, right, uh, for your plan. So, in specific, like I said, the way we started out was by making a few assumptions on the information that is required, okay? So we started out by making assumptions that we knew the action model of the human agent, okay? That's one assumption. That's not a very, you know, it's not a very realistic assumption to make, but we started out with that by saying that, okay, we know exactly all the actions that Commander X will be able to perform, okay? That's one. The second one is that we assumed we knew the goals of that agent. So we assume that, you know, either we know or somebody is going to tell us. In this case, the somebody happened to be Gordon, right? That Gordon Gordon told, told, told the robot that, you know, the com human commander, that uh, Commander X has the following goal. And then finally, we also assume that we knew the current state of the human commander. Now, that's obviously a big approximation, but in this case, what I mean by knowing the current state is, for example, knowing the current location of the human commander, and the fact that Commander X also knows about all these things on the map, okay? Those are the assumptions that we started out from, all right? And like I said, the planner simulates the human's mental process, okay? so. I mean, again, you know, this is just some motivation on why we need this sort of thing when we're talking about human-robot teaming. Uh, one of the things, like I said, is when we were doing these human-human studies, you know, so sometimes they do indicate that, you know, humans, we just, we have this notion that, you know, we have this idea that other humans will have capabilities similar to us, they'll be able to do things similar to us, okay? And sometimes if you know your teammate really well, you, you actually know certain other things as well, right? So, for example, if you know that someone always takes the stairs rather than taking the elevator, right? That's knowledge that you know because you know that guy, you know, that's information about them. So, all of that knowledge is useful and you should be able to use that in planning, just as humans would, right? Because if you think about a human team, human-human team, humans would use knowledge about their teammate to make their plans better, to coordinate their plans better, and so on. So why should robots not be able to do it? That's the whole you know, intention of this work. And basically the idea is that we use this representation that uh, you know, Gordon and Matthias proposed uh, earlier about agents having beliefs and intentions, okay? So an agent, so in this case, that agent is Commander X. You know about the beliefs as well as the possible goals or the possible intentions of the commander, and you want to add those to the robot's knowledge, okay? And use that information to predict uh, you know, the possible plan of their agent. So that's a So your agent is a robot? The agent that we're planning yeah. for is the robot. But the guy that we're predicting the plan of is a human. Well, okay. So let me, let me show you on the okay, map. Okay, so, yeah. yeah, this one. Right. You have a robot, you have God and you have me. Correct. So, so I... So everyone has a plan? Or there's only one plan? No, no, everyone has a plan, okay? Uh -huh. So... When I say I, I mean the planner, right? The planner creates a no, plan. No, 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 who are you? It's three, we only have three. Okay, so I am the robot, okay? Okay. I am all the planner. The robot and the planner are the same thing, right? Robot and planner, planner are the same, same thing. thing. Okay. Okay. And then there's Gordon and then there's you, okay? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Gordon yeah. is telling me some information about you, uh -huh. okay? And I am... But you said that they don't communicate. No, no, Gordon is communicating with me. He's not communicating okay. with you. Okay. So Gordon is telling the robot uh -huh. some information 
about you because Gordon knows something about you. Okay. Okay. So he's telling the robot. So he's the Gordon. Uh, he's, he's Gordon. Gordon. Okay. <laughs> so Gordon is telling me. I thought we should have got Gordon here. <laughs> so he's telling me certain things about uh, Juan Lu. Okay. Yeah. He's saying that this is the goal of Dr. Liu. Okay. And then me as the robot, I am trying to predict your plan. I'm trying to simulate your plan in okay. my head. Yeah. Okay. So that I can use it. So whatever the plan you are talking about, it's a, it's an agent, a robot plan, right? Okay. Yes, yes, the robot is simulating. All right, then this is a, okay, also about related to the work about this uh, uh, robot and uh, human teaming, right? Mm -hmm. Symbiosis is, uh, is the key, okay? So I'm thinking when you talk about the related work, mm -hmm. anybody like try